Let me ask you a few questions. Are you the guy who never brings anything to parties? Are you stealing the toilet paper for the company you work for? Are you collecting the leftover food at McDonald's? Are you a cheap, stingy, penny-pinching, pathetic punk like me? If yes, then this video is made just for you. Why hello there guys, it's Big Bugs Bear Boy. And I'm here to teach you how to live your lives like Ebenezer Scrooge. But the only spirit that's gonna visit you is the spirit of Christmas money. A fair warning though, before we continue, be advised that this video may actually contain useful information. So Legends of Runeterra markets itself as free to play, but the only thing that's free to play in this world is you. You are free to play. Free to play with my balls? Anyway, this means that you don't get access to all the content from the get-go, but only have a handful of cards and a few more later on when you complete the tutorials. But what if you are a greedy son of a ditch and want to have all the cards? Well, you have two options. Hey! Sell your house, sell your car, sell your friends and buy some coins. Coins can be used to purchase the cards you want in the form of wild cards or companions for your playing mat or the playing mats themselves. Essentially, content and fluff. Now coins are both for real money. But real money can be used to buy important stuff as well like food and clothes and dakimakura. So you don't want to do that. Instead you want to... Me? Gather crystals. Death crystals! Like there's no tomorrow. Crystals are the in-game currency that can be used to redeem cards one by one. Only the cards though. No fluff. So if you have money problems... Monkey problems? No, I'm not having monkey problems. Why would I have monkey problems? I advise to skip coins altogether and just roll with the crystals. Now before we take a deep dive into the wonderful world of farming, let me just say that there are a ton of videos and articles on how to maximize your XP slash crystal gain, like to surrender to an AI opponent 20 freaking times a day. But this guide will more be about how to get a lot of cards while conserving your sanity and also not growing a hate for the game. Poor man's edition. So with that said, let's dig deeper in the crystal mines. The first thing you gotta ask yourself is, where do cards come from? Is it vagina? No. You can get new cards from free sources. Uno. You straight up get them as rewards for playing. Due. You can exchange crystals for your desired cards. Quattro, you can redeem wild cards for specific ones you want. Alright, cool, but how? Well, you play. You see, each game earns you a certain amount of experience points. Playing and winning a normal or a ranked game against a human player will net you 200 XP. Plus the first 3 wins of the day give you a bonus, which is worth an additional 4, 2 and 100 XP. That's well and all, but how will you get XP? Don't worry my friend, losing also grants you a hundred. Aha, so all you have to do is just start the match and instantly surrender then. Well, you are one very clever boy, aren't you? But no. If you keep on losing, the points will drop to 50, then zero. Same against AI, but worse. So the XP you gain decreases continuously. This is called <coughs> diminishing returns. That was so worth 5 years of college. So winning and losing is not a bad source of XP, but how you win and lose also matters. You get daily missions to complete, and if you do, you are rewarded with a thousand or a thousand five hundred XP, depending on how hard the mission was. Some of it is cakewalk, and then some are as hard as my dick. Shanaris cover. But thank goodness you can just re-roll them if you don't like them until you get something you like. Or until you run out of re-rolls. Usually these take one or two games to finish and you can also play against AI to do them. So just make sure it's something you can actually complete. Nope. Okay, but why do I need experience? Well, to get a decent job maybe and not waste your time on YouTube. I mean, two things. Itchy. 
they count towards your level progression in regional rewards. Ni, they count towards your chest progression in your weekly vault. Now regional rewards come from these things called reward tracks. Here you can select which region you want to get the cards from. For example, if you enjoy a rushing phase deck, choose Noxus. If you enjoy absolute units, choose Freljord or Damasia. If you enjoy pain and suffering, like most millennials, choose Shadow Isles. But if you are a sly business boy like me, you will switch them up after a few levels. That is because each consecutive level takes more XP to achieve, while the rewards don't decrease that much. I would recommend hitting the champion capsule on each of them, and then swapping to another to maximize gains. The other place where XP matters is the weekly vault. I think this would be a good place to insert that while I was working on this video, Riot decided to update the weekly vault and the expedition reward system. So I had to re-edit everything. Thank you, Riot. Not! Now, back to our program. You start off with three puny bronze chests, which can be leveled up. Each level up will upgrade your most tiny baby chest. It goes from bronze to silver to gold to platinum to diamond. If you go beyond diamond, you will get a capsule. This is a recent addition. What you previously got was... Nothing. These chests contain cards and some crystals. The more class your chest is, the more cards and crystals it holds. So, always get three diamond chests, right? Wrong! Sit down, shut up and be ashamed of yourself. Because the chests have a sweet spot. And that would be three platinum boxes. Why you may ask? Well, for one, it's not too hard to get. If you keep doing your missions and play one or two games daily, you'll eventually get there. The slope gets a lot steeper after platinum chests, but the main reason is that you get a champion wildcard instead of a random champion. Now we'll discuss wildcards later, but it's worth mentioning that you also receive an expedition token. Granted, you manage to reach one silver chest, which is as hard as staying home during a pandemic. It's not that hard, guys. Alrighty then. There. Now what is an expedition token, you big furry bear boy? It's a token for expeditions. Expeditions is a special game mode where you construct a deck from a given set of cards and compete against other players with it. The goal is to see how much wins you can accumulate with your mixed bag of vomit of a deck. More wins get you a bigger booty of course, and that means an epic capsule, additional cards, XP and crystals. And even if you are literally the worst player ever and manage to lose 4 games in a row, you still get the epic capsule and 100 XP as a consolation prize. And you know what? If you just surrender 4 times using your token, you'll still get the capsule. Good value. And speaking of value, crystal math time. So, we know that gems are truly outrageous. But what are they worth? Well, here you have it. Common cards cost 100 crystals, a rare card is worth 300, an epic card is charged for 1200, and the price tag on a champion card is a nifty sum of 3000 crystals. Now if you want a full collection, you'll need 3 of each card. And since there are 4 champions, 6 epics, 18 rares and 25 commons in each region, that means that you will need 81,300 crystals for a single region Bruh. and 487,800 to get all the cards. Zoinks! For comparison, on average, 3 platinum boxes from the weekly vault will yield you around 11,000 crystals worth of stuff. So if you want to catch them all, it would take roughly 44 weeks. But. To be fair, what you start off with is a pretty nice set with a lot of champs, and the regional rewards will net you a lot more cards, so in reality, it's probably just half that time with chilled out, regular play. At this point, I should also mention duplicate protection, or DP for short. So a good hard DP is when you receive a fourth copy of a card you already own. In the real world, you would throw the junk right into the trash fire. 
Here, the game changes it into another card of the same rarity, if it is an epic or a champion card. If it's a shittier card though, you get crystals. However, not too much. Only a small percentage of the price you get it for. For the exact numbers, there's a table in your face. One thing we have neglected so far is wild cards. Now wild cards can be redeemed for real cards of the same rarity. You can get them from regional rewards via wild capsules, or whenever you get a plain old card, it has a chance to upgrade into a wild card. In fact, everything has a chance to upgrade into a better version of itself. How big of a chance? Here's your table, sir. Enjoy. Okay, so now you understand everything about everything. But what is the best strategy for us penniless hobo type guys? Useful tips! Tip number one. Don't get the cars you don't need. Why? Because you'll get DP'd if you do. Think about it. When you get a common, it's worth 100 crystals. But if it's the fourth one, you only get 15. So if it is something you don't need, don't buy it. You'll get it eventually with random drops anyway. Tip number two. Use wildcards first for redeeming. Your wildcards will become useless once you have all the cards, so better use those first and save up on the crystals, as that is not rarity restricted. Tip number 3. Always do your dailies. Missing out means you lose at least a thousand XP, which is about 4 games of XP, so try to do them, even if against AI. At least that's quick and easy. Tip number 4. Get 3 platinum chests each week. Not too hard to get, the rewards are great, and the champion wildcard will let you compile a new deck much easier. So I would advise against just letting it go. Tip number 5. Do expeditions anyway. Remember when I said crystals can only be used to redeem cards? Well, I lied straight into your face. Sue me. You can start an expedition by paying 2000 crystals as well. So if you are just looking for getting cards for your collection, what's better, an epic, two rares, two commons, or the same plus crystals and free XP? Tip number 6. Get the first win of the day. Don't be a pussy. Make at least one decent deck and win at least once a day. You will miss out on a lot of XP if you don't. And lastly, tip number 7. Don't grind. Grinding is the worst thing you can do. It will destroy your enthusiasm and rob you of any fun you had with the game. Bruh. Stop playing for the day if you are tired or you don't feel like it. The world won't blow to smithereens if you miss a mission. Do something else, like watch my other videos. Remember that you are playing a game to have fun in the first place. Don't take that away from yourself. So, can you play Legends of Runeterra for free? You definitely can. And not only that, but if you follow the previous 7 tips, collecting cards won't feel like a chore, but a gratifying achievement to look forward to. Well, thanks for watching guys, let me know down below if you enjoyed it, and hush if you hated it. Please share this video with your friends, cause that would mean a lot to me, as the content is getting less shitty with each of these. Subscribe if you feel like it, and you can also follow me on Twitter. See you guys next time. Until then, take care.